3 News Now This Week. On Tuesday, homicide investigators were on scene at this for rent home near the corner of 192nd and W. Early that morning, they had discovered the body of NP Dodge realtor Michael Mickey Sidoro. Sidoro had been reported missing the night before, with a family member telling authorities he had come to the house for a showing. Tuesday morning, his truck was found a few blocks away from the scene of the crime. Investigators were at the house throughout the day searching for answers. We're going to start or continue to interview uh, people involved or anybody that would have talked to him recently. Uh, we're going to start looking through any computers and phones that we can, uh, speak more to the family members and see if maybe there was somebody that he may have had some cross words with or anything like that. The Douglas County Sheriff's Office says despite what has been floating around on social media, there are no suspects in custody at this time. They do not believe that there is any immediate danger to the public, but realtors should do their viewings in pairs and those going to the viewings as customers should also be paired up. Reporting in West Omaha, Jessica Edson, 3 News Now. The Douglas County Sheriff's Office says they have a suspect in custody in connection to the NP Dodge realtor Mickey Sidoro's death. Officers arrested Ross Lorello in connection to Sidoro's death. He has been booked into the county jail on a homicide charge. Investigators say Lorello met with Sidoro at a rental property near 192nd and W for a viewing. Officers checked the home on Tuesday after Sidoro was reported missing and found his body. The sheriff's office says Sidoro died of a gunshot wound. Police say the investigation is ongoing and we will bring you the latest on air and online at 3newsnow.com. So I, I expected his support. I was surprised uh, Tuesday night when the president uh, became, came out against it uh, because we, had give, we were given every indication that the president supported it. Don Bacon, along with the rest of Congress, was thrown off last week when President Trump threatened to veto on a bill his Treasury Secretary told them he'd sign. One reporter said that Bacon told his fellow Republican members of Congress that Trump sold out the GOP. I did because the president and his team negotiated the bill that we voted on, encouraged us to, to vote for it, and so then to find out 24 hours later that he opposed it, uh, it, you know, it concerned us. But Bacon says he's not dwelling on the negative, as he's happy. The president turned another 180 and signed the bill. But now Congress is reacting to Trump and will soon be voting on a measure that gives $2,000 checks to Americans, not the $600 in the stimulus package. Bacon doesn't sound keen on pushing that through. If we're going to spend money, we need to target it towards those who need it. And, and so I think this is not a smart way forward saying he wants the money to help out small businesses and those unemployed due to COVID. That's what I think the COVID supplemental should be for, is to, to be targeted money to help those that are struggling. And the, the problem is with direct payments, it goes to everyone, even those who were not hurt. In a statement, Congressman Jeff Fortenberry said it was important Trump signed the bill and that additional relief will be an ongoing consideration of Congress both now and into the future. Bacon flew back to D.C. Monday not only to vote on the extra money, but also to override a veto Trump actually made. It's the bill that funds the military budget. Trump didn't sign it largely because it doesn't remove protections from social media companies. And there's no way that the Democrats will pass this in the defense bill. So you got to ask yourself, do we want a defense bill or not? I say yes, we need one. And this is a good bill. And I think we, we should work on the social media concern separately. John Kipper, 3 News Now. A sexual assault of a woman stationed at Offutt Air Force Base in 2016 has led to a potential new law that would give more protection to military women who report assaults. Good evening, I'm Maya Sines. The measure is part of the defense bill that was passed by Congress and political reporter Alex Miller with our partners at Newsy tells us what led to this action. 90% of my military experience is like overshadowed by this one single traumatic night. Christina Portwine hadn't even been at Offutt Air Force Base in Omaha, Nebraska a week when she was sexually assaulted by another airman. I'm not like a huge drinker, but I was drinking to include myself with the crew. And I ended up passing out um, at his apartment that night. I fell asleep on his couch. And the next thing I remember was picking me up and carrying me into his bedroom. He would not let me choose no. I kept saying no, and he wouldn't take no for an answer. At the time, still a teenager, she says she repressed the experience until rumors started that forced her to confront what happened. 
I went through that night over and over and over and over for months and months. And it drove me into just the most depressive state I had ever experienced. She confided in her female supervisor who told her she didn't believe her and to suck it up. The same woman later told Christina she'd have to work one-on-one -on -one with her attacker and the only way to avoid it was to report the assault. She did, just as she was being named Airman of the Year. Reporting was something Christina had never planned to do. After an investigation ensued, her attacker was cleared, but it was Christina who was punished with an Article 15 for underage drinking. It's the highest level of punishment before a court-martial. The Air Force docked her pay, suspended her rank, and she lost her GI benefits while a student in Omaha. I went thousands of dollars into debt. While appealing this punishment to no avail, Christina was diagnosed with PTSD, anxiety, and depression. I attempted suicide. I, I thought that there was nothing left in life for me. Sorry. I felt like I was living in a nightmare. It was a nightmare. And I, I felt like the military had given me everything and then took everything away from me. It was after her appeals were denied, she sought help from Congressman Don Bacon, a former airman himself who once served at Offutt and as a five-time commander had dealt with similar incidents. A woman should feel free to come forward and should know that she's gonna be protected uh, if there was sexual assault happened there. And, and I think every commander should wanna have that environment uh, when they're in charge. Bacon helped restore Christina's benefits, get her an honorable discharge, and with that, she just graduated from school in Florida with a degree in political science. With her in mind, Bacon offered the Safe to Report Act with a bipartisan team that ensures survivors will not be penalized for collateral misconduct, like underage drinking, if they report. If, if folks realize that you're vulnerable to get a, a some kind of charge for underage drinking, they can exploit that. If you don't deal with this in the military, at some point they get out. And then they're in the civilian world and they're preying on other people. We have an obligation in the military to deal with this directly where we see it. The bill passed by the House and Senate in the National Defense Authorization Act was vetoed by the president Wednesday. Congress is expected to override the veto after the holidays. Christina says she hopes her experiences paves the road for more women to come forward more incredible women will have the opportunity to excel in the military. I, I didn't get that chance, but I hope some other, someone else does. In Washington, Alex Miller, Newsy. Now, as we head into a new year, you may want to give your social media page a fresh look to mark the occasion. Omaha's first selfie museum could provide the perfect backdrop for you. 3 News Now reporter Jessica Edson tells us more about the soon-to-open selfie spot. Some may call it vanity, but in an age where your social media is often the first impression, the selfie has become a bit of an art form. Across the country, selfie museums, interactive museums that aim to provide fun and creative backdrops for those self-portraits are popping up, including right here in Omaha. The selfie spot located in historic Benson will be Omaha's first selfie museum. Owner Asia Anderson says the museum will be open for professionals and those just looking to have some fun. Um, so in the day age of social media, it's just a really a fun opportunity, a great opportunity to capture some really cool shots to kind of boost your social media presence and really make anyone look like a professional. The way it works, book your ticket online, make sure your phone is charged, and come shoot some photos for about an hour. Along with backdrops that will rotate every few months, interactive sets, and lighting, the Selfie Spot is also partnering with the production room to offer the option of having a personal photographer. This is Anderson's first business, and she says despite the pandemic, getting ready to open hasn't been too much of a struggle. Um, the real test will be in 2021 when we're open for business and we're starting to see what kind of customers are coming in. Uh, with the vaccine recently being released um, and everyone taking a lot more safety measures, hopefully it doesn't impact business too much. The museum is set to open on January 2nd. Reporting in Benson, Jessica Edson, 3 News Now. Trudging through the snow to get to and from your daily activities is already difficult, but having to navigate your way through this... They had snow plowed my driveway up high where the person that does my driveway couldn't get in. Proves to be impossible. Connie Joy Caruso says plow drivers couldn't find another place to store the snow. 
Caruso called her mobile home park five times yesterday, but the plow driver didn't get to it until this morning. So I missed two of my medical appointments. I'm 78 and I have a lot of them. Now Caruso is left feeling the effects of a stressful season. It's been a real pressure on me and personally, you know, I, I didn't know if I could possibly have a heart attack over it. I reached out to Council Bluffs Public Works for a statement. Ultimately, it said that this is a private road and they're not responsible for plowing it. The owner of Caruso's mobile home park, The Grove at Council Bluffs, got back to 3 News Now with a statement saying in part, in this specific instance, we acknowledge that there are areas where we could have done better. Specifically, we experienced our first significant snowfall of the season on Tuesday. We are using a new snow removal contractor. And while they did a very good job in general, they missed a few of the cul-de-sacs in the community. The owner also says it's residents' responsibilities to clear snow from their own driveways. Still, Caruso is left picking up the pieces for missing important appointments in her life. I have to make them up and the years, I have to wait until next year now. and. One of them was very important. Reporting in Council Bluffs, Isabella Basco, 3 News Now. And we have new information tonight about Christmas Eve's gas explosion. The gas company has repaired a gas pipeline that ruptured near Oakland, Nebraska. Northern Natural Gas says after initial investigation, it found a series of gouges on a segment of the line. It adds that that damage may have been caused by someone working in the area. It could take several more weeks to confirm the exact cause. There were no injuries reported and services have been restored. Well, the pandemic has challenged teachers in unprecedented ways, which is why Schooler, a company that handles supply chain solutions for grain, is offering bonuses to Omaha teachers. Now, more than 100 Omaha teachers who mostly serve at-risk students are receiving a $400 bonus thanks to an initiative organized by Schooler. The bonuses will support 115 teachers who work for one of three organizations, the Omaha Street School, the North Star Foundation, and the Q School System. The principal of the Omaha Street School said the bonus's timing is perfect. We, we are, uh, we're, a, we're essentially a one, a one school building school district. And so the teachers that work in my building, they, they make somewhere between 70 and 80% of what you would make in a, a district, say, this, say OPS. And so I, I remind all the kids and families all the time, you know, these folks could go elsewhere and do the same job and make, make more money. Now, Megan Belcher, the senior vice president for Schooler, hopes this initiative will stress the importance of recognizing hardworking teachers during the pandemic. I know from just my um, personal experience that teachers have had a tremendous impact during the pandemic. I know that the pandemic has also had a tremendous impact on them. Um, and we were very excited to be able to collaborate with other leaders in town um, to support them and give them just a little extra boost in engagement. Along with Schooler, the Omaha companies Builder Trend and Home Instead, as well as some anonymous donors donated 50000 to fund these bonuses. Right and early on this Saturday morning, Omaha foodies sought refuge in a sign. An open sign, lit up for the city to see. Uh, my favorite food is peanut butter chicken. Uh, it has to be peanut butter chicken from here or else, you know, it's not the same. It's been my favorite food since I was five. I drove for three hours from Kearney this morning. Um, got here about 45 minutes early. How important is this place to you? Uh, well, on a scale of one to infinity, it's probably pretty close to infinity. From patrons waiting patiently in lines and in their cars to backed up telephone lines and a full parking lot. It turns out that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the eatery's popularity. John Jerry chose his apartment based on its proximity to the restaurant. So I lived there for about a month and then the fire happened and I had to start going to the grocery store. Stephen Krawcheck says the food's quality is irreplaceable. My family's try to make their sauce for forever. We can never make it. Um, it's just the best sauce. We come here and we just get the sauce sometimes. Ultimately, Dan Picorni believes this huge turnout is reflective of customers trying to embrace the good during a grueling year. Oh, it's a good Christmas present for what everybody's went through this year, and I think it's a uh, good timing. Due to the high demand, Three Happiness Express is presenting a condensed menu until further notice. But as you can see, that in itself is giving the community a lot of happiness. Reporting in Omaha, Isabella Basco, 3 News Now. After the year we've all had, many in Omaha still wanted to ring in the new year with a bang. We're just excited to be helping, helping people 
uh, take 2020 out and usher in 2021. This year's New Year's Eve spectacular is the 21st, hosted by the Holiday Lights Festival. Some felt this year's show is a little more meaningful than any before it. Bringing on the fireworks again this year I think is extra exciting for, for people so that they can come out and do something a little bit different and also just look forward to a hopeful 2021 and saying goodbye to 2020. But of course, the year and the pandemic hasn't ended just yet. The spectacular is held in parking lots of CHI Event Center, which allows it to be COVID friendly. We have a ton of parking lots that people can park in and they can view the show from their vehicles. So really the only difference this year is we're just asking people, if at all possible, to stay in their vehicles, to stay as safe as possible while watching the show. This year's musical theme for the show was Everyday Heroes. We're really just honoring, you know, all of the essential workers, all of the healthcare providers that have been doing so much this year to keep, you know, us and our community safe. J&M Displays, the company that sets off the fireworks, says it's exhilarating to put a smile on people's faces at the end of this difficult year. I think the, the people, they need it. You know, they've been, they've been tra not trapped, but, you know, in their house for months, working from home. And I think this is a nice little breather for them. In Omaha, Alyssa Curtis, 3 News Now. Six months after it was originally planned to open, ACX Cinema 12 in Elkhorn is finally able to welcome moviegoers inside. The brand new theater hosts 12 auditoriums, including a screen that is seven stories wide and five stories tall, one of the largest in the state of Nebraska. Concessions and cocktails are offered, or you can drop by the backlot restaurant located inside. The theater has many state-of-the-art features, but owner Bill Barstow says first and foremost, he wants guests to feel safe when they visit. We were one of the founding people of theater circuits to sign on to Cinema Safe, and it just establishes a protocol that makes sure that you have a safe environment to, to watch a movie and when we have movies, and right now we do have movies. The movie theater business has been slow this year, less because of safety concerns and more because movies just kept getting delayed. Because of a lack of content, ACX has only opened two of its 12 auditoriums at this time. This isn't what it's going to be. This is just a little taste to show people that, you know what, we persevered, we got it open, and we're going to continue to stay open and we're going to roll this until the pandemic clears. Um, but it's going to be a long road. I mean, uh, theaters took a beating. The theater opened on Christmas Day with Wonder Woman 1984, a movie that, oddly enough, was scheduled to be released in June when the theater had planned to open. Barstow says while it's been a rough year, he thinks there will be a boom in business in a matter of months. I think, uh, we truly believe that there's going to be a sugar high of content, and when these movies start popping, all these ones have been delayed come April, May, June, July. You're going to see a lot of interesting stories about theaters and coming back. Reporting in Elkhorn, Jessica Edson, 3 News Now.